Hello, everyone, and welcome to Read Along with Grandma Sherry. I hope you are doing well today. The story we will be reading is called Corduroy Takes a Bow. It is written by Viola Davis with pictures by Jody Wheeler, and this is based on the character Corduroy created by Don Freeman. It was just starting to snow when Lisa and her mother got off the bus in front of the theater. Lisa held Corduroy tight as they walked up the steps. She had never been to a big theater like this before. Neither had Corduroy. They had come to see a performance of Mother Goose Rhymes. In the lobby, people were picking up tickets. Ushers handed out programs. A brass chandelier hung from the ceiling that was painted with clouds. Suddenly, the lights flickered on and off. That means the play will start in a few minutes. We should find our seats, said Lisa's mother. Lisa held her mother's hand a little tighter and held corduroy a little closer. The usher took their tickets and showed them where to sit. The seats are so soft, said Lisa. She put corduroy on her lap and looked through the program. Right before the play started, a very tall man sat down in front of Lisa. Mommy, whispered Lisa to her mother, I can't see. Here, dear, said her mother, we can fold our coats together and you can sit on top of them. When Lisa stood up to sit on the coats, the orchestra started to play. She forgot all about corduroy. He slipped off her lap and fell underneath the seats in front of them. Now I can't see anything, said corduroy. Maybe if I got a little closer to the music, I could see the stage. He peeked down the aisle and saw some stairs. When corduroy got to the top step, the big red curtain went up and up and up. Corduroy was so startled that he lost his balance and tumbled into the orchestra pit. He looked around at all the musicians and thought, This is a good spot to hear the music, but now I can't see the stage at all. At the back of the orchestra, there was a tall set of drums. Maybe if I sat up there, I would have a better view, he thought. Quickly, he crawled through the orchestra, past feet, between instrument cases, and around music stands toward the drums. How did you get here, little fellow? The drummer whispered to Corduroy. You must be a prop from the play. Someone will be looking for you. He put Corduroy up on the ledge behind the drums. There was a chair off to one side behind the curtain. I could see better from there, thought Corduroy, but before he got to the chair, a stagehand tripped on him. Sorry, Bear, said the stagehand. He put Corduroy on the table with the other props. The table was hard, not like Lisa's soft seat in the theater. Backstage was very busy. Actors were coming and going, changing costumes and getting their props. One actor almost grabbed Corduroy. I should find a safer spot, he decided, and he hid between the costumes. This is safe, he thought, but I'll never see anything from here. There was a tree with a basket in its branches in the wing off to one side of the stage. I would be able to see from there, Corduroy thought, and he climbed up the tree and into the basket. Well, thought Corduroy, This is more like it. Not too high, not too low. This is just right. He settled in and watched the Mother Goose performance. I love the theater, said Corduroy. After a number of scenes, the stage manager called out, Final scene, everyone. Take your places. Stagehands quickly moved new scenery onto the stage while the actors went to stand in position. Suddenly, Corduroy's tree began moving onto the stage. Then it started to grow. Up, up, up went the tree, the basket, 
and corduroy. This is a very tall tree, said Corduroy as he looked down at the stage far below. The tall tree made him think of the tall man who sat in front of Lisa. Corduroy wondered, how will I get back to Lisa if I'm up in this tree? On the stage, Mother Goose started to sing. rock a bye baby, on the treetop. When the wind blows, the cradle will rock. Off stage, a fan blew air onto the branches of the tree. The cradle began to rock back and forth, up and down, back and forth, and up and down. Corduroy was getting dizzy. He held on to the sides of the cradle as it rocked faster and faster. Mother Goose kept singing. When the bow breaks, the cradle will fall. And crack, the bow did break. And down will come, baby, cradle and all. Down, down, down came corduroy, cradle and all. Before corduroy knew what was happening, Mother Goose scooped him up for the curtain call. The audience clapped as the actors bow. Corduroy bowed too. After the curtain call, the cast took Corduroy backstage to the dressing room. Who does this bear belong to, they wondered. The usher brought Lisa backstage. Corduroy, there you are, said Lisa. How did you get on stage? I couldn't see and I wanted to get a little closer, said Corduroy. Oh, Corduroy, said Lisa, you certainly got closer. The very next day, Lisa made a theater just for Corduroy. He could see everything from a nice, safe spot. That is the end of Corduroy Takes a Bow. This story was written by Viola Davis and illustrated by Jody Wheeler. These characters were created by Don Freeman. Now, we have read several other books about Corduroy and Lisa, which were originally written by Don Freeman. And this one was just as nice. I hope you enjoyed it. And I hope you get to go to the theater with your mom or dad or your friends, and you get to experience the fun that Corduroy and Elisa had. So I hope you enjoyed reading that story with me, and I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. Bye-bye.